we have before us the opportunity to forge for ourselves and for future generations a new world order, a world where the rule of law, not the law of the jungle, governs the conduct of nations. When we are successful, and we will be, we have a real chance at this new world order, an order in which a credible United Nations can use its peacekeeping role to fulfill the promise and vision of the UN's founders. You've been here since the beginning, Carstairs. How does it look to you? General, it couldn't be worse. We have elite troops out here now against untrained black fanatics. The whole thing should be over before the weekend. Those troops are facing a highly trained underground guerrilla army. They have military weapons and they know how to use them. The commander of those elite troops insists he can put this thing down within a few days. You disagree? Yes, sir, I do. They're a first-class fighting unit. You prepared an options book? Yes, sir. And? We have three. Root them out one by one, starve them out by siege, total evacuation of the black population. Evacuation? Now, the first is too costly in lives and equipment. Neither evacuation nor siege would work. Why not? General, we sealed off the ghetto for three days last week. It paralyzed the city. Paralyzed Chicago? Chicago is more dependent on black labor than one would think. 90% of the garbage collectors are colored. 60% of the hospital workers are colored. 60% of the bus drivers and 80% of the postal workers. So all well, the concentration. The detention camps occurring under the 1950 Subversion Act already. We can't put them to immediate use. Your recommendation? We can end it alone, sir. Yes? We need two people over in this area, please. Hurry. Due to increased fighting in Chicago, the president has ordered a brigade from the 82nd Airborne into the war-torn south side to reinforce the beleaguered National Guard under heavy attack by black guerrillas since late last week. This is Pat Fennell. Martial law portions of Rex 84 were outlined in a 1982 memo written by FEMA Deputy John Brinkerhoff. Martial law was to be declared in the event of a national crisis, yet the plan did not define the term national crisis. The plan allowed FEMA to take control of both federal and state governments, appointing military commanders to replace duly elected officials. The plan also called for the rounding up of at least 21 million American Negroes for delivery to numerous military bases converted into prison centers, also known as FEMA relocation camps. Why? Because at that time, African Americans were classified as one of the largest threats to the continuity of the federal government. Yeah. Judah is a lion's whelp. From the prey, my son, thou art gone up. He stooped down. He couched as a lion, and as an old lion, who shall rouse him up? The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet, until Shiloh come, and unto him shall the gathering of the people be. Must respond. Well, that's an excellent idea, Senator. How do we do that? Find out who they are and bomb the shit out of them. And if we can't find out? Look, I hate to be the voice of doom, but it keeps escalating. First a bus, then a theater. What's next? Well, how about sending in a National Guard? The National Guard is for riot control, Senator, not for counterterrorism. The Army, then. I've read the contingency plans. It's established legal doctrine, posse comitatus, that the Army may not be turned against our own people. Even if that's what our own people are asking for, three to one? If the President's willing to declare a state of... President Lincoln, Lincoln declared martial law in 1862. He suspended habeas corpus. Which the Supreme Court later found unconstitutional. The President's plane lands in two hours, and we owe it to him to have a consensus. You don't fight a junkyard dog with ASPCA rules. What you do is you take the leash off your own bigger, meaner dog. General? The Army's a broadsword, not a scalpel. Trust me, Senator, you do not want the Army in an American city. But hypothetically, how long would it take you to deploy? You know we can't go in until the President invokes the War Powers Act, Steve. Well, I understand that, General. Let's assume for a moment that the order has been given. 
12 hours after the president gives the order, we can be on the ground. One light infantry division of 10,700 men, elements of the rapid deployment force, special forces, Delta, APCs, helicopters, tanks, and of course the ubiquitous M16A1 assault rifle. A humble enough weapon until you see it in the hands of a man outside your local bowling alley or 7-Eleven. It will be noisy, it will be scary, and it will not be mistaken for a VFW parade. I remind you, General Devereaux does not speak for official army policy. A police function has become accepted as our role in Haiti and Somalia. Make no mistake. We will hunt down the enemy, we will find the enemy, and we will kill the enemy. The plan also called for the rounding up of at least 21 million American Negroes for delivery to numerous military bases converted into prison centers, also known as FEMA relocation camps. No card-carrying member of the ACLU is more dead set against it than I am, which is why I urge you, I implore you, do not consider this as an option. I mean, it feels like I'm in Iraq right now or some, some other country. It does not feel like America. Uh, seeing my military deployed in my city, it's not something uh, you can grow accustomed to. So yeah, I do feel safer. No, I don't feel safer. Having police here is wonderful. It makes me feel repressed. I don't feel safe. After protests marked by violence earlier this week, nearly 5,000 extra National Guard and police are patrolling Baltimore. But the reactions to that force differ depending on the neighborhood. I can't say I don't trust the police. I don't trust the motives of some officers that are here to uphold the law. Me, as a black man, with the police, uh, at this heightened sense right now, at this heightened time, no, I don't feel safe. They put blue light cameras in our community years ago. And they said it would make us feel safer. Not at all. They say they're gonna put these body cameras on officers that's gonna make us feel safer. We still getting shot, killed with the body cameras. It just shows you the disconnection between community and government. I feel like they need to get to the bottom of how this all started. You need someone that's relatable with you to make you feel safe. And they can't relate to us in our struggle. So that doesn't make me feel safe. That makes me feel depressed. I've been here um, going on 11 years. First time anything like this has happened since I've been here. <laughs> I think it'll go back to normal. I think that the cops being here are making some people more upset than they probably normally would be. I tell you, as a patron, I came here today and I wanted to take a step back and I know I didn't do anything wrong and I still was like, like, whoa, like, it's like overkill. Eight cops right here, right now. You know, it's just like, that's an overwhelming amount of force. And why should you make the whole city suffer for a small pocket of people? You know what I'm saying? It's like, that's insane. Nobody here feels safe and feel like the police works for them. No, I don't. I know that nobody feels like that. I don't feel like that. I never feel like anytime, anywhere I am that the police, you know, is working for me. I don't think, no, I don't feel like that at all. I know that. They're attacking our way of life. It ends now. Are you saying the president is prepared to take the necessary steps? I am saying the president is prepared to be presidential. Hello. Hang on. Senate remained in emergency session late into the night debating the president's call for martial law. We have in this country a tradition of invoking yeah, martial law only when the most dire of circumstances require it. But at what cost? All eyes now turn to New York City to see if martial law will bring the terror to an end. Good morning. 
Today, with the invocation of the War Powers Act by the President, I am declaring a state of martial law in this city. And these are the words that the Lord spake concerning Israel and concerning Judah. For thus saith the Lord, We have heard a voice of trembling, of fear, and not of peace. Ask ye now, and see whether a man doth travail with child. Wherefore do I see every man with his hands on his loins, as a woman in travail, and all faces are turned into paleness? Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. For it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord of hosts, that I will break his yoke from off thy neck, and will burst thy bonds, and strangers shall no more serve themselves of him. But they shall serve the Lord their God, and David their king, whom I will raise up unto them. Therefore fear thou not, O my servant Jacob, saith the Lord, neither be dismayed, O Israel, for lo, I will save thee from afar, and thy seed from the land of their captivity. And Jacob shall return, and shall be in rest, and be quiet, and none shall make him afraid.